This bear's out of hibernation and he's digging up trash. The only thing fake about me is my respect for you. Hello, Hello. I'm Yager Harden. <laughs> and I am Papa the Bear. <laughs> And, and welcome, welcome to, to the, the Real House Bears. Bears. Ooh, hello, hello. My name is Abigail Elizabeth Kissentel, and I'm here to read your kiss. <laughs> so here we go, darling. You're going to read my I've, kiss? I've been doing this for years and years and years. My grandma, my mom, my mom was a, a kiss and tell. Thank my great grandma was a kiss and tell. My great great grandma was a kiss and tell. My great 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 grandmother was she was just a whore. So here, give a good kiss on this. See that I don't have my good lipstick on. I see you're wearing bruised whore. <laughs> yep. Interesting. Uh, I, I can I can see from this kiss. Hmm. You are going to be bald. Ooh. Oh. Ouch. Ooh, you're going to gray as well. Ooh, there it is. Ooh, uh-oh. Wow, uh-oh. I'm really good. This is like witchcraft. Uh, I, I think you've had some, like, ups and also some downs in your life. Yes, as well. Oh, yes. my goodness. I'm reading it now. It's coming to me. Oh, my goodness. Yes, I have had ups and downs. And I see you're married as well. It says you're going to get married and you're going to live happily ever after. I am married. And to I'm a living. Jamaican man. Hmm. Oh, so it's not my current marriage. Interesting, interesting. Ooh, 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 my goodness, ooh. But bring on a hot Jamaican man. Oh, my goodness, thank you for having me on your podcast. Well, thank you, Miss Kiss and Tell. <laughs> <laughs> and now, that one I really did not expect. Sometimes so you stupid. really draw me for a loop. <laughs> He's a real pro. That was funny. I liked it, though. I liked it. It was someone new. It was someone new. I, but you really also surprised me with your German Jaeger. <laughs> Jaeger Harden. Jaeger Harden. <laughs> you don't know what to expect today. <laughs> it, was, it was like last week's. So when I went back and edited last week's episode, I had so much fun editing that episode because we had so much fun recording that episode. Like, it just made, it made me laugh and laugh. Oh, my goodness, laugh and laugh so hard. <laughs> it did make me laugh and laugh. And also, maybe due to last week's episode, I don't know, but we have some new folks who are hashtag House Bears, Bears famous. famous. Hold on, bring the Kids Bop kids in here. There we go. Oh, no, there we go. No, that's the cheering. There we go. Thank you, Kids Bop kids. Yeah. So this first person, um, so these people are, are on YouTube, and I agree, like, why don't we have more subscribers? But, um, well, we'll get to that. They second. call them subs. So this is Robin Roca 2091 YouTube, which I think, to be honest with you, we might have already made House Bears famous. I feel like I've communicated with this person a few times through YouTube, and so if I did, then certainly they've been House, House Bears famous, but nonetheless... Thank you for saying, why aren't there more subscriptions? We are the best. We are the best. We're hilarious. Well, it's because our listeners aren't telling their friends to listen, maybe. Ooh, that's on you guys. That's, no, what, that's what he just all, said. Well, that, that's one reason. And also because we suck at social media. I'm not going to argue with that one. Like, we only post when we have a new episode most of the time. And we don't even have a TikTok. So... That's another reason why more people don't know about us, I think. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but we also have a new person who's hashtag House Bears Famous, Samantha Gibbs 7852 on YouTube, who just subscribed. Thank you so much. Um, yes. <laughs> when you guys brought up the Namaste Bitches, which of course is spelled with the dollar sign where the I should be, um, being ridiculous, but what I think is the most ridiculous part was that they ripped the name of it off of Dina. I thought I heard Namaste Bitches like in, that was in some Dina's early season or something. That was actual tagline in the first season that she came back. Like, she left the show and came back when the season where the twins were on there. It was awful. But I want Andy to call her out, that, call her out for that so bad. 
beyond so many, many other things. But here we are still talking about namaste bitches. And that stuff hasn't even been, what, since April? It right. hasn't even been in function. But you know what? I can't believe that didn't ring a bell to me that Dina Manzo, that was part of her tagline. I, I feel I feel stupid. I don't feel like the Bravo historian that I claim to be. I'm upset about it. <laughs> it's because you're watching like other trash right now, like Love Island. Well, it's over. Love Island USA is over. Well, they are having a reunion. But the finale was just the other day. We won't talk about who won. It's not who I wanted to win, but it's who I pretty much knew would win. Um, also, today, as a matter of fact, it looks like in New Jersey, they've been having sleepovers with one eye open because Teresa made a very... Um, important post today <laughs> so let me read Teresa's post and then let's talk about it okay I have se- I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding you gotta chew your gum next. I know right I have been on the Real Housewives of New Jersey for the last 14 seasons and during that time I have seen and been a part of my fair share of drama with my castmates What is happening off camera on social media is absolutely disgusting and is fueled by toxic people who are not affiliated with the show or the cast and are only interested in promoting themselves by spreading their hate through false narratives and lies. It has affected all of us on the cast and our families. They are attacking our children, going after our businesses, and they are turning something that is supposed to be entertainment into something very dark and toxic. This hate and toxicity has to stop. I am asking everyone to stop engaging in any negativity towards my castmates and all of our families. Enough is enough. Love, 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 Teresa. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. love. Uh, I don't, I don't. Well, when I, I'm so naive. When I first read, I was like, Look at Teresa. Like, she really did not make that about herself entirely. Like, she really was inclusive of her entire cast. It was never me, 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 I, I, I. It was always us, us, us. And I was like, well, you go, Teresa. I thought that was a great post. Um, And especially because, you know, according to that post, what they're doing on TV isn't (laughs) doesn't seem to be as dire as what the bloggers and other people are doing. So... I was like, well, you go, Teresa. But then I start reading comments of people who were reposting it. <laughs> it's like, well, Teresa, who did you mention that you're part of the darkness and toxicity? And another person's like, Teresa, her her assistant wrote that really well for her. Yeah, <laughs> my, I think my favorite one was um, the call is coming from inside the house. Because, <laughs> I mean, she is... I mean, just this season, like, uh, never mind, because later on in this episode, I'm going to talk about it. Her vocabulary? No, not just her oh. vocabulary, just who she is. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I, I support what she, exactly what she says. I tend to be a half glass full kind of person, so I didn't read it and immediately think of all those snarky comments that <laughs> else was making. But I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. So... I also want to get into this week's pretty fun episode. I just want to have fun, goddammit. Um, yeah, I'm actually kind of um, relieved from this episode because it was yeah. actually kind of refreshing to have them all kind of get along for the first time at a party. It was e- This episode was really easy to consume. Like, there wasn't a whole lot of rehashing, you know. Most of this season, something will happen and then they'll spend three episodes just talking about it between all the different groups of people who weren't there because there's such a divide in the group, you know? Yeah. So there wasn't a whole mm-hmm. lot of that during this episode, and that pajama party was a blast. Yeah, I had fun at that at the pajama party. Who can't have fun in monogram pajamas? Right. <laughs> so, but just make sure you're having a sleepover with one eye open. It just rolls off the tongue. hmm <laughs> So we start off with Dolores making sex noises because Paul is giving her a massage. Uh, the Gorgas cooking dinner with the boys. Did I catch that one of the boys didn't know how to boil water? I don't know if 
I don't. I, I don't know. I was like typing something down, and I was like, I think Joe is just being a jerk. Uh, okay, and then Teresa kind of teaching the dog, <laughs> having a serious talk with the dogs, wearing her Namaste bitches shirt, of course, <laughs> uh, and forgetting Rosie's name. <laughs> And then we go to some Mediterranean restaurant that flashed the name too fast for me to read. It was like... So um, Jennifer Aiden is meeting with her brothers and her sister-in-law. Mike and Melda are the brother and sister-in-law that moved over across seas, maybe I think it was last season, and Jennifer Aiden got them that apartment. Um... And Stephen, we all know Stephen, the gay brother. He's been a very big part of the show, and his story has been a very big part of Jennifer's story, you know? He's a music teacher. Hey, shout out to music teachers. Um, See, they're all gay. Right, we are. (laughs) All of us. Well, some of the band... Well, I have met, you know, again, for those of you who are just listening for the first time, um, you might know me as Heather Gay's choir director from Salt Lake City, but I was a choir director for 21 years. Um, I, there, um, the women are most of the time straight. Um, there are occasionally straight choir director. Males. Well, it's just like male dancers. Sometimes right, there are, is right. a straight guy in there now, that just loves to dance. For, I just need to dance. I think it's more common for to be them to be straight in band. Band directors, I think, are more commonly... Male I mean, because they're not getting laid. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the ba- uh, band director at my high school, he ended up sleeping with one of his students, so he was getting laid. Not the way he's supposed to. Scandalous. Yeah, he's no longer there. Actually, the band director and the choir director both left within like a year each other for sexual related. I guess, see, they're all horny. They are. They are. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people do get their first time on the band bus. On the bus? Oh, yeah. Band kids. So many kids in high school lose their virginity in the back of the band bus. So American Pie didn't lie to me. No, no, it didn't. Like, literally, girls given BJs and hand jobs <gasps> on the way home from a away football game or on the way home from a band competition when it's dark outside. <sighs> Sneaking liquor. Like, band kids, marching band kids are wild. <laughs> That's not how you play the flute. <laughs> the skin flute. I have a very long tongue. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love how proud Jennifer Aiden is of Stephen's talent, though. I like how much she boasts about him. I think it's sweet. Um, so Mike's opening up a store in Naples, Florida. We can all assume it's a jewelry store because that's kind of what they do. Uh, they're going to be gone about once a week. Melda thinks that people in Florida are nicer than people in New Jersey. I mean, New Jersey well, people do have a reputation for being a little bit more like maybe high school. Edgy? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, in Florida, it's just a lot of retirees and people like just wanting to relax. All, yes, yes. Um, and then we have a short recap of Danielle and Jennifer Aiden's fight. And Jennifer Aiden's like, can you believe she hit me? Can you believe the trash? I just barely tapped. I just barely t- I know. It, it's just... <sighs> It's not like you didn't do anything to antagonize her to do that. I, you, know, you know, it's just really, I was thinking about this in the car on the way to the grocery store the other day. You know, I'm sure people are divided, um, but, you know, it's really what you consider being crossing a line. Is crossing a line getting in someone's face, or is crossing a line putting your hands on someone? Where, where is your, I guess, moral <laughs> line is going to determine how you feel about this situation. Some people feel, well, if you're going to get that close in my face, then you deserve what comes to you. Whereas other people on the camp is like, the first person to put their hands on the other person is, you know, kind of who's default. Um, Yeah, I guess, I don't know. It's hard to say, you know, because getting in somebody's face is also, but you can also step back from that to stop that before you you know, push somebody. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's really what it's all about. But also don't be a bitch and start coming up to me and start saying all this stuff bad about me and thinking that I'm a bad person. Right. Cause right. I will show you I'm a bad person. I mean, I think we all know <laughs> whose side you're going to be on and pretty much anyone, but Jennifer Aiden's side is in here. Oh. Um, I have to say in this situation, I'm definitely, I'm on, I, I am on Danielle's side. Uh, I, my line is the physical contact. 
It was just like a smush, a cup smush. It barely even, well, barely even. <laughs> um, over at the Fudas, Danielle brought Valentina over for a play date with the Fuda girls. And I was like, Valentina is several years older than these girls. Like, you brought Valentina over to babysit, is what you did. Well, how old is Valentina? I, I don't know. Because kids at a certain age, they do like to have younger kids because they treat them like, like, I don't know, they have some kind of superiority over them. Or they feel like that. like Big just sister. That, just that natural laugh, big sister. Yeah, yeah. and at that age, you, any, you could still play. Yeah. Do okay. anything. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I know it's... you grew up alone and as an only child, so I understand that you don't understand siblings. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Danielle fills Rachel in on the events that Danielle's dad has been invited to but has not been able to come. Danielle also... You know, is sad that when things like this Jenna Braden situation normally happen in her life, her dad would be the one that she could go into and talk about it. And he might, you know, kind of appreciate Danielle's brand of how she defends herself, you know? Yeah. So, the, and I, I get that that's probably more sad than anything else. Rachel also made a comment about the church burning down at the Namaste. I mean, I think that was everybody's. Like, that's the first they, thing you think of. <laughs> she didn't say specifically Jennifer Aiden. Um, it could have been really the whole group. Because even mean, I was watching, I was like, really? A church? Is this really the best place to do this? Right? I mean, you, it, this cast is very polarizing. You really do love them or hate them. And so you can really feel that way about almost anyone on this cast. Listen, Teresa already forgave God. So she can go in there now. Fair. <laughs> um, Rachel is going to have uh, like a pajama party for the ladies minus Teresa over at Teresa's Gia is studying uh, she took the whole month off to take her LSATs which that gave me like secondary PTSD from my friend Sarah who is a lawyer because I, I remember her um studying for her not her LSATs but for the bar exam and like she really had to shut out her life for a month or so to prepare for the bar exam like that's intense that's so. wild to me I don't know how to study like that the LSATs are to get into law school and then the bar exam is, is to, to get be, your is to become a lawyer yeah oh okay yeah but you know I agree with Teresa when she says that her girls are go-getters, and that Teresa herself is a go-getter. Like, literally, she got out of prison and immediately wrote another book. Paid off debt. And paid off all of that restitution and is now living in a, you know, something, something million-dollar home. Like, she really does hustle. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think anybody's saying that. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I'm just, uh, I, I, I'm always impressed by how hard she worked to recover from that. Yeah, that was a big deal. Gia brings up Louis's case with his ex. It's been going on three years. But I think the restraining order situation, has that just been like six months? Six months, yeah. So apparently Louis is harassing her, which wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me if they're having this contentious court battle and Louis is not harassing this woman. Louis's ex? Louis harassing his ex. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I Maybe not, like, to where she should necessarily have to worry about a physical altercation, but I'm sure Louis is badgering her and yeah. saying horrible things. I, I believe so, too. Um, I mean, listen, he's got two wolves he's got to feed. So I feed two wolves every day, Teresa. He does. And if, he, if those wolves don't feed, he's going to have to let them out. Seriously. Y'all. This is dangerous territory. And he'll let him out on his ex-wife, for sure. <laughs> That's what happens is wolves were hungry. <laughs> Jesus. And they went after his ex-wife, but now she oh needs my a restraining God. order. <laughs> the wolves are here again. The wolves are about <laughs> to go after Margaret next. Margaret is next on the wolves' menu. Um, Margaret, we now know. You've been asking all season Oh, my long, gosh. Why does Teresa hate Margaret so much? Finally coming out. So finally it's coming out that Margaret has allegedly been communicating with Louis' ex to kind of maybe even support her through this court case. Or like give details or something. I don't right. know. I don't know. And then 
Um, that so there it is, there it is. They apparently there is hardcore evidence, and it's coming. It out. better be juicy. If it's not something juicy, I'm gonna get so irritated about this. It's a miracle that we haven't heard about it. Like just that's like, what I'm saying. Just like Salt Lake City really kept their finale. Like they did a oh yeah, they did a great job. job of keeping that finale under wraps. I think New Jersey might be doing the same thing, as, and that's why we don't know what happens in the finale quite yet. Okay. Uh, I think in the finale we're going to find out. Or no, actually, was it previous for next week where we see Teresa's lawyer? Yeah, her lawyer starts telling everybody, like, what... It might be next week. Yeah, what Margaret's been doing and yeah. whatnot. But, you know, Teresa doesn't want people to steal her piece. Teresa says, you don't put stuff out there to hurt people. You don't do that. You don't put lies out there about someone and, and try to hurt them in any way. Like, you don't do that. Girl. Didn't you just put something out there earlier about somebody's ex-girlfriend talking shit about them and you brought it to light? Listen, she says specifically you don't spread lies about people. And I'm like, girl, you've been spreading lies about Melissa Gorga since she got on the show. Yeah. You have been spreading lies this whole, like, series for, what, 14 years? Is that what she said? 14 seasons. <laughs> 14 seasons. All hell, Teresa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll hail Teresa. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, yeah, Teresa's going to have her lawyer come and talk to everyone about it because her lawyer is not involved, is not Louis's lawyer. So he can talk about it ev because he's not like litigating it. If that's if I use the right word. Mary, did I use the right word? Yeah, call Mary. All right, now we're over at Margaret's. Uh, the Gorgas come over. Joe has stopped by to chop down a tree. Um, first thing I... Uh, hold on, hold on. Since we just brought up your friend Mary, uh -huh. um, Mary, if you're listening, I am not just laying around on the couch doing morphine. <laughs> That is not a thing anymore. It never was a thing. You stop spreading lies about me, <laughs> saying that I just lay around the house and do morphine all day. Uh, so for those of you who are completely confused, <laughs> a long, long time ago on this podcast... I was talking about how I was in the hospital, I was dying, and my husband left me at home on the couch and flew somewhere while I was dying... And you just said that, oh, you're just laying around on the couch doing morphine. And our friend Mary got the biggest tickle out of that. And now that's all she says. <laughs> so how's Hunter doing? Oh, he's probably just laying around doing morphine on the couch, huh? <laughs> like, that's, that's my identity now. <laughs> I don't agree with that type of behavior. So uh, <laughs> that was random, but it was. Funny. Sorry, I just needed to call Mary out. That's okay. I'll make sure she listens. She doesn't watch New Jersey. She's fed up with the toxicity the toxicity um, of I, the love, city. <laughs> I love it when margaret calls joe b a little super mario i mean listen my joe's like super mario I thought that was, <laughs> that's cute i thought that was really cute um i've never heard a penis called a pashido or yeah push push or i don't know pashido is that what they're saying i have no idea I brought it down. I only know it as penis. Right. Pish a deal. Pish, pish a deal. It looks like I, I, I spelled it P. We did have captions on. Um, so I think it's P-I-S-H-A-D-E-E-L. I don't remember how they're pronouncing it. Maybe I'll have to go back and find that sound bite so that you all can know afterwards. No, you don't feel good. Your little pish ideal's hurting you. No, it doesn't hurt. It's his prostate, which affects the pish ideal. <laughs> <laughs> um, Margaret fills Melissa in on the prostate cancer potential, which is sad. And then Joe goes to cut down a tree. Now, this remind me, so uh, coming back to me being a choir teacher for so long, there was a teacher at our school named Mr. Turpin. And Mr. Turpin, he was getting close to retirement years there towards the end, but he also had a tree cutting down service. And he would hire some of the younger teachers, you know, like just to work for him on an occasional Saturday, our friends Nathan and Baghole. And they would go get shit can drunk and go cut down trees. Mac, Mr. Turpin himself, 
he would, I don't know if, I don't even know if he came to school sober to be honest with you but yeah they would all him himself he's like this I don't know 50 60 year old man getting shit and drunk and cutting down huge trees like that uh uh-uh. well yeah. that's South Carolina for you I guess <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> get up there and cut down that tree here d- d- shotgun this beer first yeah you're not gonna need a <laughs> bottle of ketchup for that no no i love it that joe tries to play so um joe gorga reminds me so much of like a guy that i used to do construction with and he used to date my sister a long time ago named brian parker and he was like a huge role model for me but we used to play pranks on each other and just mess with each other all the time he was just like a big little kid you know and i always joe always reminds me of him and you have a crush on both of them oh, of course um, over at Jennifer Fessler's, you know, I have a little bit of a girl crush on. I love her. Dolores comes, but bearing cannoli and flowers. And then, you know, Dolores' thing for the past few episodes is our friend group is falling apart. Let's fix our friend group. So they're reminiscing about how much fun they had in Ireland last season and then just kind of lament that it will probably never be fun like that in the group ever again, which that's completely true. Not with the entire group. It's not possible. Just simply if you have Teresa and Melissa in the same room, even them ignoring each other makes it uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. you know? And now we've got Danielle and Jennifer Aiden. We've got Rachel Fuda and Teresa, like, just so much. And then we've got, like, Jackie just hovering in the background, just picking up crumbs, you know? (laughs) I feel I, I feel so bad for Jackie. She's like everyone's like, why is she here? She seems so out of place. She seems episode. so out of place. I even wrote that when she was at the party. It's too. like she is so out of place here. It's weird. It is weird to see Jackie there. It's like you know when like in, in like uh, movies and stuff when a new girl moves to like a new town and like one of the moms makes the other mom like makes her like invite her to a sleepover and she goes there and. <laughs> Everybody's just in their girl groups, just staring at her and talking shit about her. She's just sitting there at the table and eating she, potato chips by herself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Dolores fills Jennifer Fessler in on the podcast event and starts talking about how Teresa has been so stressed with this court case, like she's losing weight, her stomach's in knots, she was like ready to throw up at the podcast event, maybe even pass out, like. But I thought, it was, I thought the most important part that Dolores said here was, I think Louis's reaction kind of feeds into Teresa. One hundred percent. He's definitely like instigating it harder. Like especially with like we've talked about it earlier that Louis talks about Teresa's brother so negatively whenever he can. Yeah. But I think Louis gets worked up and Teresa feeds off that. Um, Dolores asks Jen Fessler how things are going with Rachel Fuda. We find out that Jen Fessler sent Rachel Fuda a text after the fashion show. Rachel did not respond. But then, once Jennifer Fessler declined the invite to the pajama party, then Rachel responded saying, Oh, I hope it's not because I didn't respond to your text. At least she acknowledged that, but yeah. So um, at least that made Rachel reach out. And uh, so Dolores wants Jennifer Fessler to help her plan uh, some sort of retreat for maybe the whole group uh, with the intent of building bridges. Yeah, it's going to be like another, like the 50th healing trip that they've had on the show. But, you know, I feel like their expectations are, are somewhat reasonable. It's not... Let's make people friends again. It's let it's let's have people not fight each other. Yeah. So I think that is a reasonable. Teresa and Melissa aren't fighting each other. Again, they're ignoring each other, but at least we're not fighting each other. But in the spirit of building bridges, then Dolores encourages Jen Fessler to reach out to Rachel Fuda to accept the pajama party invite. And she begrudgingly does. Over at the Capital Craft Tap House, we then have Teresa and Jennifer Aiden. Jennifer Aiden has been saying for episodes how Teresa hasn't had her back, so now it's time to talk about it. Teresa apologizes pretty quickly here. Well, before we get to the apology, what is getting a glaze on your hair? 
I've ne- oh yeah, I never I've never heard of that before. It looked a like glaze. she got her hair colored, but <laughs> she's like, no, I got a glaze. I got a glaze. I don't know what a glaze is. But if anyone knows what a glaze is, hit us up. I mean, we could have Googled it. Like we live in an age of information at the tip of our fingers, we but we're just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we just took notes, like, right before we started recording. They get right into the podcast, right into Danielle. I want those nachos. Jennifer Aiden <laughs> didn't feel like she had any support. But she's like, listen, I'm going to do my q and I wasn't going to ruin this night because of y'all's drama. That's a, that's really what she wanted to say. Yeah. She caught her words, but she, that's really what she wanted to say. But as much as Jennifer Aiden wants to get her point across... She's afraid ain't going anywhere. Teresa is her meal ticket. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know she's the... Teresa keeps her relevant. Yeah, Teresa's like the um, the alpha friend. You know, wherever oh. she goes, that's where everyone goes. Yeah. No matter what. Absolutely. So, um, you're right. That Teresa does apologize, but, in the, but that conversation, again, I'm sure we're seeing quite an edited version of it, but it was short. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, uh, Jennifer diverts it to Louis' court case. Uh, They're just waiting for the decision now. Yeah. I guess it's just a restraining order. That's crazy. Trace and Louis just want peace and happiness. That's the kind of people they are. Mm. <laughs> and then the pajama party was so much fun. It's got everything, too. I love it. I want to go to a pajama party with mon- 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 monogrammed uh, pajamas. pajamas and like a chef and, and slippers like and a bartender. F- a flower wall with neon signs. I was, I was like, for a party at your home? I mean, just even just cast? even just the like the flowers hanging everywhere was so pretty. Yeah. It like, really set an ambiance. Um, she wants to rephrase this stay over, which to me still sounds like an overnight situation. <laughs> Rachel yeah. doesn't want it to sound like an overnight situation, but stay over still sounds like an overnight situation. Um, I, she, guess it's, I guess it's better than just a sleep over, because sleep over, it's got sleep in it. Six one. Well, you know when. Never mind. Let's move on. <laughs> Jen Fessler is kind of the last to arrive. Danielle's not here yet, but you can tell this is about very strategic order of arrival. Which, if you don't know, all arrivals in Housewives uh, scenes are strategic. <laughs> um. So, but Fessler and Fuda squash the beef pretty quickly. Um. I do feel like Rachel was a little bit full of shit here (laughs) pardon my language i feel like she kind of made up excuses for her bad behavior well i just wish you would have pulled me aside it wouldn't have helped even if she pulled her aside it wouldn't have helped she just didn't want her to talk about it period yeah and she didn't want to listen to anything that jen fessler had to say Mm -mm. so that's not being a good friend either no matter how irritated you were so i am 100 percent on jen fessler's side here and i think that rachel really didn't have even though I love Rachel, don't get me wrong, but I don't, in this situation, I don't think she had a foot to stand on. Um, <clears throat> Margaret is starting to rub me the wrong way. Is she? I love Margaret, but her whole identity, even when that person's not there, is cutting somebody down. Shame. And it's starting to yeah. get really old. Like, that's, your, that's all you have to say. Like, every single time you have something to say, it's about somebody else. Yeah. And, like, you're cutting them down. It's not a joke. It's a joke for you, but it's to it's on their behalf, right, you know. Right. And it's starting to get a little irritating. It's like, can you just like be yourself for a minute and right. stop making your whole identity these fights that you have? I love that people are so obsessed with me that they talk about me nonstop. Gotcha. And it's I'm starting to get bored of it because uh, she says she talks about oh some of these people have hooves in this group and later on she talks about the cake she's like oh is that is that Jennifer and, was, and she's like oh it's just a joke i'm like well, you guys aren't friends don't make a joke when you're not friends with somebody that's right, not a right. joke that's an, an attack and margaret knows damn well what it is right, and it's starting right. to get a little irritating in I, and i'm even st- going to stick up for jennifer in this well, one well i mean rachel and jen fessler hang out with margaret and um i loved it loved it when jen fessler said I think the toxicity in this group is contagious, and Rachel and I just caught it. Yeah, right on that. yeah. They both hang, you might, there might be something to it. They both hang out with Margaret. Mm-hmm. 
So <laughs> I would right here. I wrote Jackie is so out of place here. <laughs> I, yeah, she's like I she's too. just walking around in the back, and she doesn't have a group to talk to or no, like a close weird. friend there. And so like she's literally like kind of walking back from like other people talking, and then trying to listen to what Margaret and Rachel are talking about, yeah. or uh, Jen Fesler and Rachel are talking about. But it's also <laughs> weird to see Jennifer Aiden in the group without Teresa. Yeah, yeah, it's so weird because Jennifer Aiden is not on that team. Mm-mm. She and Jackie almost are on the same team, so I guess at least they have each other. Yeah. So Chrissy, the kiss reader. I She's it, a fake. I can oh. tell you from experience. <laughs> she is a fake. But I really love the flashback to the coffee ground reader. I completely forgot about that. But I remember when we were watching that, we were like, this seems so like scripted. Oh, yeah. And it ended up being scripted yeah. because Jen- Jennifer Aiden literally talked to her about yes. everything. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm glad that Margaret asked if lip filler affects the reading because I was also curious about that. Um, Jennifer Aiden tells Jackie that she finished her book, and Jackie was so honored that she finished her book that Jackie was surprised that she just wasn't a New York Times bestseller. <laughs> I hate to say it made me laugh a little. Bit. I know I hate. I hate. Like, it's I it's so Jackie's desperate. Success. It's just so desperate. It's so desperate. I do. I really wish Jackie success, but she does seem very desperate this this season in particular. Yeah, she's she's really grasping at straws. And I feel like she's making poor decisions. Mm-hmm. Based on this need to sell books and this need to be still be included, a part of the attention. Yeah, still be on the show. Mm. Um. So. I, it hurt my feelings for her, but made me laugh at the same time. Jackie, I'm not ever telling her anything else again. Uh, Danielle then arrives with the cake, and there is a wafer cookie to represent each cast member and Jennifer Aiden's falling to the side. Then we have the fruit by the foot challenge that Jennifer Aiden wins. Um, Jennifer... <laughs> Jennifer Aiden doesn't swallow because Bill eats a lot of spicy food. Dolores got such a <laughs> kick out of that. She laughed so hard. <laughs> you know, Dolores doesn't like to talk about sex. Uh-uh. So, she gets a kick and giggle out of uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. Um, what makes you know that your partner wants sex? So Joe Gorg will go, hmm. Mm, you look so pretty. Jeff Fessler just says, hey there. How do you know that I want sex? You go, and you start turning like paw at my like, underwear and you're like, uh, 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 now, sex me. <laughs> sex me. <laughs> I've never said sex. Um, what uh no you just you always want sex so i just constantly That's know that true. you're just always like hey you look so sweet today i'm like i'm not giving it to you i would like to have my prostate milk there um i know you want to you never want it until it's night and we're laying in bed and when you start getting extra pet and rubby and start rubbing closer to my nether regions that's when i know it's going to start see happening. subtle I don't just paw at you like an animal. I'd like to be pawed at. I'd like you to milk my prostate. Oh, <laughs> I don't think Jennifer Aiden knows what milking the prostate means. I agree because the hand signal she was. She's doing like that. You know, that's Hattie just Jay. you're just jacking somebody off. Milking a prostate is actually sticking your fingers at inside butt. the butt yeah. about two inches in, and then up. curve up, <laughs> and you gotta rub it, and you gotta hit that. It's a you literally milk the prostate. Yeah. She said she milks her husband's prostate. Is it tap, tap, tap? Is it up? Get it, girls. Do it. I know y'all listen. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Your your husband's going to be so glad. <laughs> yeah, don't even talk to him about it beforehand. Just, just do it. Him. Yeah, just like, boop. <laughs> just take that middle finger. <laughs> Make sure you have, like, nails with, like, jewelry on them, too. Like, yeah, and don't <laughs> use lube. No. I mean, if you have to, just spit on it. <laughs> Rub back mountain that shit. <laughs> no, he was lots of live, as a matter of fact. Uh, Dolores tells the ladies about the retreat that she and Jen Fessler are trying to plan. Um, 
<laughs> if you pretend to get along, you might find out that you actually get along. And I think that was relatable for a lot of people. Yeah. I have people that I enjoy right now that I couldn't stand in the beginning. But because we were in the same circle. I know. Now we're married. (laughs) (laughs) Now that was lust at first sight. And then love later down the road. What are you looking for? I was looking for like an aww button. Uh, like a sound effect. Aww, sweet. I don't know if we have an aww. Oh. We can put it in a, I love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you all pretend that you like us and follow us on social media. On Facebook and Instagram, we are The Real House Bears. On Twitter, we are Real House Bears. On Inst- no, our Instagram, you can email us at therealhousebears at gmail.com. You can buy merch at the website realhousebears.redbubble.com. Mm. And to you youth out there, don't be sus and just sub for us on all of our channels. There we go. That's uh, that, that was that was a good that was a good youth uh talking okay so anyways yes you can find us on youtube thank you for making comments on youtube and subscribing to us on youtube um and you can also watch us not only on youtube but also on spotify and you can listen to us wherever you listen to your podcasts wherever you want (laughs) all right you guys bye bye okay love you bye